Hi, my name is Walter Rowe. Today we're going to discuss printing from Capture One. The first thing I want to talk about is calibrating your display to edit your images for printing. Print paper itself has a very low luminance. I calibrate the brightness of my display at 85 candela. This ensures that the brightness of my display, the luminance that's, the lumens that are coming out of my display, matches roughly the reflective luminance of the paper that I print on. I have an Epson SureColor P800 printer, and I often print on either premium luster or matte paper. I almost never print on glossy, although some customers do prefer glossy. Uh, but 85 candela is the brightness that I calibrate my display so that the, as I'm editing my images, I'm setting a brightness that's going to make the image look exactly like it will when it comes out on paper. That's the first, first secret to really good print environment, is editing at the right brightness of your screen. Okay, second thing you need to know about printing is you need to crop the image before you print so that the aspect ratio of the cropped image matches the aspect ratio of the output image that you want. For example, if I want to print a 16 by 24 image, that is a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. So I would select 3 by 2 and I would crop to 3 by 2 and then I would print on my 16 by 24 paper. If I want to print a 4 by 6 print, that's still 3 by 2. If I want to print an 8 by 10, that's a 4 by 5 aspect ratio. So now I need 4 by 5 to print to an 8 by 10. So I would crop to 4 by 5. If I want 5 by 7, I need to choose 5 by 7 for my aspect ratio of my image before I print. So this is lesson number two, secret number two, to effective printing in Capture One. Always set the aspect ratio of your image to match your output before you enter the print dialog. So here I've now cropped this image to 5 by 7. Let me go into the print dialog, that's Command P on the Mac. And some things that I want to point out in the print dialog. A, you can adjust the dialog to be larger and smaller. Uh, it's a scrollable dialog. Uh, on the left hand side, you need to select the printer. So I've gone into Page Setup. I've selected my printer. And now I'm going to select the size of the page that I want to print on. So I want 5 by 7 and I want to print it borderless. So 5 by 7 borderless and I want it to be a landscape image. There's portrait and there's landscape. In scale 100%. I don't want it to do anything with adjusting the scale. So I've set that. Under print settings, I go and I set the quality under media and quality. I set the quality to best. I want it to use the highest resolution printing possible. Uh, these other things I really tend to not have to mess with very much in here. Uh, the one thing I do want to make sure is that the scale to fit paper is unchecked. You don't want any scaling to happen by the printer itself. You want it to keep things exactly as Capture One sends it. I'm going to hit cancel there. Then I want to set my color profile. My color profile should be the color profile of the printer and paper that I'm printing on. So here is a SureColor P800 and it's premium uh, luster paper. So I've got that selected. So now that's my uh, the ICC profile that's going to use. And I'm going to use perceptual rendering intent, but you can use relative, absolute, or saturation also. And then you can choose whether you want black point compensation on or off. Uh, I tend to not need it. Uh, and you can choose whether you want, you know, points, picas, centimeters, you choose your units. 
uh, four page sizes. And in this case, um, you can create templates once you do some setup in the GUI here. And we'll walk through this in a second. I uh, have created a template. Have I created a template for, for five by seven? So I have not. So there's no user template for five by seven. So what I want to show here real quick is notice there's a white border around the frame itself, the picture, and then there's also this gray space. Uh, the gray space is just the user interface of Capture One. You'll see that it goes, uh, it, you know, it changes whether it's on the side or the top and bottom. That's just the, that's just kind of this viewport for your preview of the print. Um, so you can kind of ignore that. That's not really important. If there's any white space around your image, that's space you need to pay attention to. That comes from setting the margins here in this, this section right here. In this case, we know we wanted a five by seven image. So we're going to set the margins to zero. Now, why is this not five by seven? Let's do that. So we want five by seven image. The, notice they call, they call it cell. I don't know why they call it cell height, but that's what they call it. And I think that's because you can print the same image multiple times on a page. Like, for example, you want a sheet of wallet size pictures. Uh, that's kind of common, you know, used to be a common thing with uh, like high school pictures and things like that. Um, so, uh, okay, so notice the white area is now gone. Uh, if I drag the GUI, the viewport, I only see gray on the top or bottom or left or right. I don't see any white areas. So zero margins and five by seven cell height, which matches the image size. Now notice I've got this gray big watermark here. You can turn watermarks off or you can set a watermark. If you choose an image based watermark, I tend to use a PNG file with transparent background and you can set the scale. In this case, I don't need it to be quite that big. It's going to be in the, tucked in the lower left-hand corner. You can set the placement horizontal. Uh, negative horizontal is to the left. Um, positive horizontal is to the right. Vertical is to the bottom and positive is to the top. So if I move this left and right, you can see this moves it left and right. And if I move this up and down, it moves it up and down. So that just kind of gives you an idea. Maybe I want to actually put it up there in the top left corner. Yeah, I tend to prefer it in the bottom left, but I'm just illustrating the, uh, the interface here. So this is how you place it. Uh, how you set it is you just go into your, um, into your folders and you pick your watermark and you drag and drop it right onto that square where it says watermark. And that will take care of that. You can also use text for a watermark, and then it gives you a text field, and you can set uh, the size, the color, the font, you know, and whatever text you want. Uh, you can you have the same options for placement and scale. Uh, you can change opacity with the uh, text and with the image. You can change opacity. Um, so you can so you know you may want it to blend in a little bit. Um, so that's how you set a watermark. So let's see, we've gone through and we've chosen our printer. We've chosen our color profile. We've chosen our rendering intent. We've chosen our margins. We want no margins because we said it's a five by seven sheet of paper and we want a, a borderless print. And so we've got a cell height of five by seven. So everything looks good. So I'm not gonna print it, but if I wanted to, notice the print button is in orange. I, I click print and off it'll go to my printer. Now, that's a fur 5 by 7 Let's imagine that I wanted to print with a margin. Maybe I want to print, um, what do I want to print? Maybe I want to print a 16 by 24, but I want to put it on a 17 by 25 page. And I'll explain why I might want to do that in a minute. Let's actually go here and just um, reset the crop tool, and then I'll just click this and that's automatically cropping it to three by two. 
kind of move this a little bit. Now I've got my three by two crop. I'm gonna go under File, Print. Now I'm back in the Print dialog. Now notice this, uh, it's remembering my settings from the last time I printed. Well, it thinks it's a four by seven piece of paper. It thinks I want a five by seven image. And that's not what I want. So what do I have to do? I have to go under Page Setup, and I have to choose my paper. So down here, I've got a preset in my printer for 17 by 25. Uh, we do want a landscape, so we're now at landscape. And what do I want? So I said I wanted a three by two aspect ratio. Well, what that really means is I want a 16 for cell height and 24 for cell width. That's three by two aspect ratio. And notice when I set the cell width and height, it automatically centered with the margins um, that on the page. So I've got 16 by 24 image, I've got 17 by 24 paper, and I'm gonna go pick one of my Moab profiles. We'll call it a Moab Premium Luster. Uh, and now, uh, let's see, what else do I need to do? Oh, now notice that my um, watermark is now really little. Well, that's because scaling is scaled relative to the size of the watermark file itself, not to the image. So it depends on how many pixels my watermark file is. Maybe I really want this to be really big. I don't really, but you can see I can scale it any amount relative to the original size of the watermark file itself. So that's how I would adjust. And the reason I may want to leave this one or this half inch border all the way around is the customer may want to um, mat this and frame it. So if I leave a half inch margin all the way around, uh, that allows for half an inch of the image to be tucked underneath the edge of the mat. And so it'll securely stay behind the mat and it won't shift around any. Uh, so you would imagine that they would want to maybe mat mount this on some type of solid surface, gator board, something like that, that, that won't warp over time. And then they want to put a mat on top of it and the mat would cover this white edge around the edges and come all the way up over overlapping barely on the edge of the image itself so that it has a nice clean finish so that's why you may want to leave a white border sometimes around and sometimes you just like a print that actually has a white border around it as well so so you have both options you know for just to have it on the print itself or to be able to use it for matting and mounting that's the print dialog in Capture One. Thanks for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. And I look forward to talking to you next time.